Hi everyone, now before I start off today's review, there's just something I want to point out. I am feeling a bit under the weather. I have got a bit of a cough and I've also been doing a lot of sneezing. So, do bear with me if I have to keep stopping the video at various parts to cough and sneeze and whatever. But I'm not going to stop my illness from filming my review videos. I'm going to press on with them. So that's just something I want to quickly point out. But anyway, with that explained out of the way, let's crack on with today's review. So welcome again to another review from Class 47 Peter and in today's review we're going to be having a look at a Hornby model as you can clearly see it's practically obvious that today we're going to be reviewing a Hornby model and as you can also see there's not one model but two models in front of you. Now I should point out that they're both not going to be reviewed together in this review they are going to be reviewed but they're not going to be reviewed together, they're going to be reviewed in separate videos, they're not going to be reviewed together. And there's no prizes for guessing what model we're going to be having a look at either. It is the all new, retooled Hornby Princess Coronation, better known to me and you as the Duchesses. They are classified as the Princess Coronation but they are mostly referred to as the Duchesses. And to be honest I prefer to call them the Duchesses as well. But that's just me. Now I've been really excited about these models since they were announced at Wally last year when I went and I was really well chuffed when Hornby had announced that they were going to be retooling the Duchess because it is a model that was in need of a retool. Don't get me wrong, the previous tooling they brought out was good but it wasn't perfect either. It was in need of a retool. And that particular model I had previously, which was the older tooling, I sold off. I mean, I sold it off to get money for Warley, but it would have been sold off anyway to make way for these models. And they have announced three, but only two of them have been released, because I understand that the one that they haven't brought out yet, which is City of Birmingham with the TTS sound, is not due out now until May next year. These are the only two that have been released. Now they weren't due to be released until November, but they've actually been pushed ahead of their release. They, these models were only just released last week, the previous week in which I am now filming this review video. And because I love the Duchesses so much, I just had to buy two of them. Because they are in my top 10 favourite steam locomotives list, I would place them in second place just behind the Bully Pacifics. Normally I would put the Princesses in second place but now I have to put the Duchesses at second place and put the Princesses at about 8th place. And ever since these models were announced my ambition was to get both maroon liveries of the Duchess and so I have. And so on screen in front of you we have 46256 Sir William A. Stania in the BR Line Maroon livery and we also have 6231 Duchess of Athol and yes I have pronounced that correctly. So in this review I'm going to be reviewing Sir William A. Stania and in the next review I will be reviewing Duchess of Athol. So I'll be reviewing Sir William A. Stania, like I said, in this review. Okay, so before I get on to the opening, there's just something I want to talk about the model first, because there is a little bit of a story to tell about this one. Like I said, this model came from JDM Models, but when I originally ordered it, I made a slight mistake with the order. 
instead of choosing flat rate shipping, which is postal service, of course, I accidentally clicked on collect from store. Now, at that point, it was a pre order, thankfully. And, but obviously, I wasn't going to go all the way up to the shop to get it because it was all the way down in Yorkshire, which is quite a distance away. So I emailed the chap who runs the shop that had made a mistake with the order and asked if it could be sorted out to change it to postal service. And that's when he emailed back saying he was going to save me one of these so that when the models were released, there was going to be, well, of course, they would put the final prices up on the website so I could just order it straight from there and then about a week after these models were then released and so as soon as I had seen that these models had been released I straight away went in and got mine there's probably not necessarily need to get straight away because obviously like I said the chap was saving me one of these but you know I still had to jump in and get mine anyway, regardless. So I do thank you to the chap at JDM Models for saving me one of these. Top bloke. And I'm very excited about this. As it's now just arrived. I will link JDM Models in the description below. I don't know if that model is still in stock at this point of filming this video. It might be, it might not be, but I will still link the website in the description below. Because this particular model has been sold out to pre-orders in most places, if not everywhere else, basically. So I was quite lucky, really, that these models at JDM Models had not been sold out to pre-orders, or pre-sold out, rather. Which makes me very happy that I was able to get one of these. Okay, so without further ado, let's get this model open. And see what it's like. Or I'll put the package in rather. Rather than opening up the model. But you know what I mean. So first of all we'll remove the outer box sleeve or cover, whatever you choose to call it. And this is the usual Hornby packaging that we're all used to seeing now. So on the front of the box sleeve you get a picture of the model of what you get inside. Then on the back you get the power classification for the real locomotive, because that's not going to apply to the model, obviously. And then you get some brief history of the real locomotive, which you can pause this video and read the brief history if you want to. I'll not stop you of doing that. Then of course you have a drawing diagram for the model. So I put the box sleeve to one side, or throw it down on the floor rather, because I haven't got anywhere else to put it, because literally right next to me is the layout so I can't put the package in there obviously and I don't want to put it in the background of the shot because well it might look a bit messy then even though there are a few items in the background here but there's just not enough room to put it on the little workbench here so that's why I tend to put the remains of the packaging down on the floor now just look at that that just looks absolutely stunning I have seen pictures of this model on the internet and they look stunning and I can safely say that the camera doesn't lie because it really is a stunner so now we'll remove the plastic packaging like so and we'll remove the card tray because it is made out of card then we'll have a look at the instructions which are stuck to the side of the packaging. So first of all we have a separate sheet for tender body removal. Wasn't expecting this separate sheet, I was expecting it to be in the instructions themselves. But that's nice to have this little nice separate piece of paper telling you how to remove the tender body. So that's nothing new. We've seen that before. And then here we have the instructions themselves for the Duchess or Princess Coronation class. On the back it tells you how to fit the brake rods and inside the instructions it's pretty much what we've all seen before. Lubrication tells you where to put the oil should you wish to lubricate it although you will find that normally at the factory they lubricate the models anyway. 
perhaps it might not necessarily need lubrication. You don't have to lubricate the models all the time because in my experience you don't need to necessarily lubricate the models. But you know, it's just a thing there in case you wish to lubricate the models should you need to do so and it tells you where the ore goes by the areas marked in red so it basically goes on the crank pins and on the axles as well just there it also tells you where to fit the accessories or details rather the tender assembly to connect the lock and the tender although they are already connected together but it is useful if you wish to disconnect them and then reconnect them together basically of course it also talks about the close coupling connection to create a closer coupling if you want to it also talks about the body removal and interestingly it also shows you the tender body in the instructions as well and yet they've also supplied a small piece of paper hmm that's curious but I'm not gonna have a go at them for that because you know it could be a case that you might lose this and so it's nice to see they've put that I suppose in the instructions as well because if you do lose this piece of paper then you have at least also got it in the instructions as well so there is a positive side to that even if it is odd if they've supplied this and put it in here but you know look at it this way if you do lose this little piece of paper which could easily happen at least you've got it in the instructions here which is nice and of course it also mentions about fitting a DC decoder and sound if you want to so I shall put those instructions to one side and put them in my folder of instructions later which is where I'll keep them sorry then I've just knocked the tripod do excuse that I do tend to keep my instructions separately I have a separate folder for Batman instructions and a separate folder for Hornby instructions well anyway so now we'll take off the outer plastic sleeve we'll put that to one side and then we'll have a look at the detail pack and so all we have to do is to remove the little bag of accessories and then we can have a look at them closer so the detail pack we get we get a flanged wheel to go on the pony truck of course we get the bright rods, one to go under the tender and one to go under the loco we get a spare tension lock coupling should you wish to add it on the front of the loco you also get an M socket as well to fit into the front of the loco on the bogey to utilise the coupling again should you wish to use it we get a brake pipe we get this little piece of detail to go on the front of the loco just under the buffer beam so basically if you use this it will mean that you won't be able to ha have that M socket on with the coupling in you get a couple of drain cocks to go on the cylinders you get a couple of footsteps as well to go on the front of the loco and last but certainly not least you get a drawbar screw link coupling ok so all the detail parts are now back in the bag and I shall be adding some of these on the model later on one thing I do want to point out ever is that when it comes to gluing on the footsteps on the front of the loco I would recommend you use this you who glue gel or DC if it's not less but it is a glue gel basically and I recommend you use this because if you use for example super glue or poly cement you will find that because in the case of the poly cement it melts it into one because it's plastic you will find that the footsteps might actually derail the front bogey and it's the same story we're using super glue so by using this glue gel it doesn't melt anything but what it does is because it's soft it means that when the model goes around corners it just simply pushes out the footsteps slightly so it can go around corners so that's just something I would recommend you could use PVA if you wanted to as well but that's something I use for gluing in the footsteps and it really does work so I would certainly recommend you use that for gluing on your footsteps but anyway moving on to the review 
we'll now continue on with the unboxing. So all that's left to do now really is to get the model out of the packaging. So I'll just undo the clip to the box there. And just lift off the top. Oh, well, now look at that. That is a beauty. I would recommend at this point you lift the Lalco and the Tender out together because they are both connected. So I'll just move this around a bit like that so I can put them out the package in a bit more easily. There we go. And then we'll just close that back up and then we'll put that to one side and we can now have a look at the model in closer detail so the first thing I'm going to talk about is the weight there's a lot of weight in this model, it's very heavy and that's good because that's what we need because if this model had no weight in it at all it wouldn't be able to pull anything so the weight is very important moving on to the detail now which we have sprung over all metal buffers so if you like your sprung buffers they'll keep you happy I don't have much care for sprung buffers but they're there anyway we've got some very nice detail on the front buffer beam there with it some nice yellow lining going around the outside and two holes in the front one's for the bright pipe and the other's for the screw link coupling to go into just under the bogey there just on the front you have some guard irons and you have what already looks like an M socket so I'm guessing the one in the detail bag might be a spare you have the cylinder layout on the front of the loco as well as some separately fitted lamp irons and also just at the sides of the two lamp irons on the front there we have some small separately fitted metal handrails you've also got a lot of rivet detail on this model including the front of the loco there that looks really nice there's some more rivets on the side of the neck holders there as well as a builder's plate and a warning sign the smoke box door has some nice detail which includes rivets on the outside of the smoke box door a separately fitted lamp iron a separately fitted small metal handrail locomotive's running number crispy printed there on the locomotive running plate on the smoke box door separately fitted smoke box door darts we also have a nice crispy printed shed code there which reads 5A which is the shed code for crew or was the shed code I should say rather and we've also got the smoke box door hinges there which look very nice We've also got the double chimney there, which looks really nice. You could add a smoke generator unit in it if you wanted to, but it's not really my thing, so I'm not going to bother. Moving on to the smoke deflectors. They are separately fitted, of course. And just look at the detail on them. You've got the hand holes cut into them like they are in real life. Because they don't have handrails on the smoke deflectors, these locomotives. And also, there is quite a bit of rivet detail on the smoke deflectors as well. And they've even well replicated the detail that attaches the smoke deflectors onto the handrails there. And that just looks fantastic. There's a lot of rivets on the smoke box as well. We also have the crisp lining on the running plate there. Which looks stunning. On the frames of the model we also have some rivet detail. And that just adds all the more realism and detail to the model. There's some nice detail on the cylinders there including rivets and some nice lining let's not forget all the link motion there, the valve gear the side rods and the link motion it's all superb to look at and I can't wait to see all that moving like you do on the real thing you've also got the separately fitted sanding gear as well of course a very nice speedometer there which is that little cable just there connected to the rear driving wheel you also have some pipe work there, running underneath the running plate down to the end of the cab just there by the pony truck and that looks fantastic there's some nice detail on the pony truck as well a spring and an axle box which is painted yellow and that looks really nice then you have this detail here which I'm not sure what it is, I think it's possibly some sort of storage cabinet of some sort under the cab and it looks really nice regardless whatever it is there's glazing in both the front and the side cab windows like we'd expect it to as well as those windows extensions at the side there that are also fitted on as well and that looks fantastic you've got a very nice top feed on the top there and just behind that there's a nice dome with some rivets on as well and that looks superb you've also got a couple of crispy printed 
warning signs on the boiler and the firebox there, which looks nice. We can't forget the separately fitted metal handrail running alongside the sides of the boiler there on the locomotive. There's some rivets on the running board, which look superb. There's some very nice detail on the running board as well, on the sides just here. You have some pipe work over there on the washout plugs. Beautiful crisp lining on the wheel arches. All the lubricator mechanism just there. And also you have the reversing lever on the loco as well. There's also some nice detail on the firebox there. Which looks superb. And again some more lining which is again crisply printed and beautifully done as well. You've got the separately fitted whistle and safety valves which are made out of brass on the model and they just look lovely. There's lots of rivets on the cab roof and also we have opening cab roof vents. They don't necessarily need to open but it is a nice feature to have and they look really nice and again you can choose to have the cab vents either open or closed. So it is nice to have regardless even if they don't need to open. We have some rivets on the cab sides as well, as well as again some more beautiful crisp lining and the locomotive's running number 46256, crisp printed on the sides there. We've also got the cab doors as well and some separately fitted metal handrails running down alongside of the end of the cab just there. Just look at the painted cab interior there, that is just absolutely stunning. The gauges, the dials, the regulator, the levers and the pipe work. It's all painted up and it looks fantastic to see. Very much like the real thing too. You've got a very nice metal foot plate there as well. Inside the cab. The livery of the locomotive is spot on. There's no errors in the paint. It's a very nice even coat. Correct shade of red. And I just love all the yellow lining. On the model. It's just very crisp and nicely done. And it really does lift the livery, I think. We do also have some separately fitted name plates there as well on the side of the boiler. Sir William A. Stania FRS. Crispy printed as well, that lettering. They're not etched name plates, I know, but you can buy some from places like Narrow Planet and Fox Transfers, but I'm not really fussed about them not having etched name plates, because at the end of the day, these name plates, they are separately fitted. Regardless, so it looks nice. We've also got some rivets on top of the boiler there, as you can see. Moving on to the tender now, which has a lot of rivet detail on, as you can see. Very much like the real Stania tender. We've got some separately fitted metal handrails on the front. On the tender buffer beam we have some rivet detail and some tender buffers. Some footsteps with some rivet detail on them. And they look nice as well. For the detail on the face plate of the tender, you've got the handles to transfer the water from the tender to the boiler, coal in the chute there at the front, and some storage cabinets to keep the driver's various things in. And that detail looks really nice. You've also got the water pickup font there, just by that little handle there, so that obviously picks up the water from the troughs there. Because this has got a water scoop under the tender, and I just love how they've ripped that on under the little handle there and that just looks fantastic. Speaking of the water scoop you can just about see it there just under the tender. There also are some rivets on the frames of the tender as well as again crisp lining, axle boxes and springs and the axle boxes are painted yellow but very much like the ones on the pony truck. Again nice even paint work on the tender the correct shade of maroon obviously, again more crisp lining and I just love the crispy printed BR like crest there. We've got some small metal handrails on the end of the tender there as you can see. On the back of the tender we have on the buffer beam some more rivet detail, a coupling hook and a separately fitted brake pipe. Again very much like the buffers on the front of the loco we have some sprung metal buffers. And these buffers on the tender are round, not oval, which is correct for the real duchesses. We also have a name tension lock coupling on the tender there. We have a couple of warning signs, loads of rivets and some separately fitted lamp irons. And we have a couple of plates there. One of them tells you the gallon of the tender, which is 4,000 gallon tender. And that looks really nice. We also have some very nice detail on the back of the tender there. Some pipe work there. 
and that nice little bit of detail there excuse my joint finger in the way and also the water filler cap the water filler cap for granted doesn't open but it doesn't need to to be honest with you but it's there and it looks nice anyway now we move on to the coal load which as I'll demonstrate to you now it is indeed removable and there we go I mean just look at that detail inside the tender there it's there inside the tender on the real locomotive but in the original tooling that was never replicated so it's good to see that they have put that on the newer tooling and it looks fantastic to see I might also put some real coal in this as well actually which I probably am going to do anyway moving on to the side of the tender there's just a mark there on the tender, just wiped it off. The detail on the side of the tender, it's exactly the same as that on the other side. No differences in the detail at all. Moving on to this side of the loco, there are a couple of detail differences. First of all, you have that little air tank there. Just on the rear of that splasher. And there's also some separately fitted pipe work trailing out of that as well, as you can see. The pipe work that runs just underneath the cab there and under the running plate is different and of course there's no reversing lever apart from that the rest of the detail is the same just like with the real locomotive moving on to the running performance now which as you can see straight from the box the model runs absolutely smoothly around the layouts there's no grinding noises stuttering movement or melt is burning out it runs exactly it should straight out the box Just look at all that link motion moving there. Moving on to the loaded test run now, which as you can see the model is easily able to haul this rake and maroon coaches around the layout. It's not the full rake because I have had to take one of the coaches out of service temporarily because of a problem with the wheels. But regardless of the size of the rake, it still shows why the weight is important in these models. And it a bit stunning with a matching set of coaches beyond them.
So overall then, the Hornby Princess Coronation class, or Duchess as it's known as, is a stunning model. And I cannot fault it at all. It really is gorgeous. And I think my review pretty much speaks volumes of that. I highly recommend you get one. Or in my case two. Because they really are well worth the money. So overall then, I'm going to rate, excuse my stuttering there, the Hornby Duchess 46256 or William A. Stania. You know what it's going to be. It's a 10 out of 10. This has been Class 47 Peter reviewing the all new retooled Hornby Duchess Sir William A. Stania and I'll see you again soon when I'll be reviewing Duchess of Athol. But until then, I hope you've enjoyed this review. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and check out my other videos and I'll see you again soon for the next review. But until then, stay cool and stay safe and look after yourselves.